If you're unfamiliar, the goal of Lethal Company is to get scrapped to the ship and then sell it to the company. Everything else you will learn in due time. You have three days to meet each quota, and for quota one, day one, I was going experimentation. It's one of three desert maps in the game, the other two being assurance and offense. It's a default facility on the inside, and the outside has this ladder to climb up. I went left first, which is my standard, and I ran past this large axle intending to grab it on the way back. However, I would not grab it on the way back because I totally missed this landmine and immediately died. Alright, let's do this again. By the way, it says day two slash one in the corner. Uh, the first number is how many days I've played out of the hundred, and the second number is how many days I've played in the current save file. I got to the facility uneventfully, and directly on the left there was this room. It normally has some good loot, and often an apparatus, but this one was empty. I also saw the slime, or hygrodare, or hygrodary, or hydrojug, or hitman gug. I chose to jump over it, and I took one hit of damage, which is unfortunate, but not a huge deal as long as I can stay out of trouble otherwise. I thought the left was totally empty, but the right was really totally empty, so I decided to keep searching left. The center is normally open, by the way, it's just blocked off this time. I also found the server room, which was absolutely empty, but did lead to another room with some good stuff, including a V-type engine. The V-type engine is a two-handed piece of scrap, much like the large axle, which means it's often worth more than a one-handed piece of scrap, but you can only hold one two-handed scrap at a time. You can hold other stuff with a two-handed scrap, but you need to pick up the two-handed scrap first before the one-handed scrap, and that's the end of the sentence. I then took the fire exit into the facility from the outside. It's normally hidden somewhere in it, However, you can also access it from the outside on most maps. Generally, you want to be finishing up the day around 5pm, but there's not anything too dangerous on experimentation until quite late. In the fire exit, I did not find a single small scrap, but around 9pm I went to get the last large axle I had dropped from the fire exit, and as I approached the ladder, everything started warping, uh, which typically means you're in danger. I then saw a glimpse of this beast, and it was a forest giant. After climbing up, I decided I'd have a better chance at survival if I just didn't bother with the last axle. At 10pm, with my time running out, I jumped down and got cover from the forest giant under this overhang. After I judged I had enough distance from the giant to make it back to the ship, I just ran for it and barely made it back and slammed the automatic door shut. Oh, by the way, this was especially scary because I didn't even know until right at that moment that there could be giants on experimentation. For day three, I chose to go to Adamance, a forest moon, and the newest of the listed moons. Adamance is one of three forest moons, the others being Vow and March. In view from the ship is this rickety bridge. There's one on Vow too. It has a chance of collapsing as you walk on it, and sprinting and carrying stuff on you increases that chance. Directly to the left in the facility was the apparatus, which I'm going to hold off on taking. I'll explain why when I actually take it with me. After emptying the left side of the facility, I found this big open area with two chasms, and in it was a bracken. The bracken generally sneaks up on you, but it's dissuaded by looking at it. But if you stare at it for too long, it will attack you anyway. I'm conflicted on the bracken. It often feels unfair if it sneaks up on you, because I don't believe it makes any sound unless you actually see it. Uh, but also, if you have the spatial awareness to regularly check places the bracken could be coming from, you're generally fine. Anyway, that room was pretty much empty, so I decided to run back to fetch the apparatus. As you can see, taking the apparatus causes the lights to go out, and it gives you radiation exposure. Having the lights out makes the game scarier, it makes it harder to see enemies, and it can mess with your sense of direction, uh, because often lights are important markers for where you are in the facility, and radiation does absolutely nothing. Day 4 is the last day of my quota, and I'm going to March, another forest moon. This map is a big pond lake thing in the middle, but you have to just curve around that and your path is more or less straight. On the left I found a key and a toy cube, and straight ahead I found another empty apparatus room, and a big bolt. That and the toy cube totaled around 50 credits. On the right I found a locked door, which I will only open if I absolutely have to. Not because keys are super valuable or rare, but because locked doors are really good landmarks for me. Speaking of landmarks, after the right side opened up into a maze of hallways, I got a smidge lost. I found another room with the apparatus, and wasn't sure whether to take it, but I figured I wouldn't be able to find it again if I waited. Here I found a locked door, and you know what? That was the locked door from earlier. What a useful landmark. I just took one inventory of scrap back to the ship. I did have a key that I could have gotten, but it wasn't strictly necessary, so I left with that inventory. In the early days, you can get as much money as possible, but you can hit quota just getting 200 every day until like quota 4 or 5. Ideally, by the end of the first quota, you'll have enough money to go to Rend, or Titan if possible. In this case, I sold 555 credits worth of stuff, which will give me enough to go to Rend, or even Titan if I get good overtime. I was 15 credits shy of being able to go to Titan, so I decided on Rend. Oh yeah, by the way, you have to pay for three of the planets. Rend, Dine, and Titan are the last planets on the list. Rend costs 550, Dine costs 600, and Titan costs 700. All three of those planets are snowy, by the way. The exterior on Rend is, as I just said, all snowy. 
and the path to the mansion or facility is marked by these lights. Titan's facility is pretty close to the ship, but Dine's is slightly further than Rend, and also not marked by lights, which is why I don't go to Dine a single time in this video. I entered the mansion. Yeah, Rend and Titan sometimes have mansions, which are generally a little easier to navigate than the facilities. Immediately upon entering, I found a cash register. They're worth a lot of money, but they also weigh quite a lot. The paid planets have a very different set of loot, and most of it is worth significantly more than what you find on the six free planets. Like here I found a hairdryer, a perfume bottle, and a mask. The mask is harmless as long as you don't put it on. On the first floor I found the kitchen, which sometimes has extraordinarily good loot, uh, but in this case all I found was one robot toy. The top floor was entirely empty, so I went back to the doorway with the kitchen, but gave up pretty quickly. I had around 500 credits worth of loot at the main entrance, and so I went back. I had 133 pounds on me with the cash register, and here I started dropping and picking it up as I walked, which allows you to regen stamina and generally move faster, but it's also very annoying. There's a small cabin on Ren's exterior, intended for you to hide from forest giants, but right as I approached it, I spotted a mask. I was already quite familiar with them. Basically, they look like and move like an honest employee of the company, but if you get close to them, they... Yeah, they kill you. You also become one of them if you try to wear the masks. That's the only gimmick to those items, to my knowledge. As long as you don't hold left click to put them on, you're fine selling them or bringing them anywhere. I'm a bit conflicted on the masks as enemies. They sometimes take up the same role as something like the Haunting Girl, who I'll talk about later, where it's not like, okay, I have to work around this to keep exploring, and instead it's like, okay, I'll have to get the hell out of here before I die. Which, in my experience, can be infuriating, because it basically just comes entirely down to RNG. For day six, I wanted to go right back to Rend, because if I choose another moon, I'll have to pay another 550 to go back to Rend. Rend was a regular facility this time, which is interesting, and more interestingly, I went right first. This is a major breaking of character. The left was also entirely empty anyway. So here's a little tip. When you're in those weird corridors like this, just keep track of the general direction you came from. You'll go crazy trying to remember each turn and corridor, but a general direction will get you home quick enough, even if you might get caught at a few dead ends. After snatching the apparatus, I saw the way home, but was hungry for adventure. I found the chasms, but quickly realized that the way back was blocked by a ne'er-do-well. While attempting to escape my assailant, I caught a glimpse of him. He's one of the little Christmas guys. The part of the facility I was in had a lot of jumps in it for some reason, and on one of them, I fell. I already probably wouldn't have had the stamina to make the jump anyway. So that guy has an official name, but I've never actually scanned him, so I only know him as the Nutcracker. He has two cycles, walking and searching, and a bonus cycle, shooting. If he doesn't see anything while searching, he starts walking, and if he sees a player, he shoots. If you kill him, though, you get a shotgun and some shells, which can basically one-hit anything in the game. By the way, you can kill enemies, it's just not the method most people use when playing, because a lot of stuff in this game is way more powerful than you could ever hope to be. Dice 7, Rend was still clear, so of course I was going back. This time it was a mansion, which is much more common on Rend. Generally, I prefer looting the facilities, but I can't deny the mansions are generally much more easy to navigate. So in the mansions, there are these fireplaces, which make a really interesting noise. It's not particularly monster-like, but it's just lively enough to make it sound a little bit like an enemy. Mainly like the butler enemy, to be specific. I had a very uneventful time in the facility. The top floor and the bottom floor were both very below average for loot, but still enough that I could make quota from one day of scrapping. In case you're wondering, the reason I throw the easter eggs is because they like to explode. I had five items outside of the store after depositing that, and I had determined that the clown horn was the least valuable. So while the coast was clear, I dropped off what was in my inventory. However, it was late enough that I deemed it an unnecessary risk to go back. According to my game summary thing, I had collected 489, more than enough to meet quota, and just enough to head to Rend again. After selling off all of my stuff, I had 576, which means I can go to Rend, and if I can actually make it back with a decent amount of money, I'll be able to do pretty well on this run. So I ended my gameplay session after going up to start the next quota, but I must have saved and quit before the next quota started, because when I logged in the next day, all of the stuff I had sold was back, but I was still on the next quota. This means that technically, yes, I did duplicate items, but it was an accident, so I'll let it slide this time. Day eight, I ran right back to Rend. While I don't need money immediately, I really need to start getting some savings, so I can't really afford to go to a free moon at this point. I had already dropped off a full inventory, probably about 300 worth of stuff, when I went down a weird staircase and got lost. 
I did find my way out, but only after I heard a nutcracker threatening to blast me to smithereens. Anyway, I deposited my goods at the door and checked upstairs. Literally the only things I found were coffee mug and a magic eight ball. The ball was on this weird ledge. Always check these balcony railway things I forget the name of. Even if there aren't any doors off of them, they can literally have stuff just on the floor for you. I took these items outside and deposited my first inventory of stuff onto the ship at 3.30. I realize this may mean I'll only be able to make one journey back, and I will have to leave at least 100 bucks at the main entrance when I leave. I was naive, though, because I would not be able to make any further trips to bring scrap back to the ship. As I walked over to bring more, I heard the booming footsteps of a forest giant, and ran to that cabin I had mentioned when I died to the mask on day five. It was only after entering the cabin that I was graced with the knowledge that there were two of the fuckers. At this point, I knew you could avoid giants by having something above your head, but I didn't even know that you could avoid them by crouching. I came to the terms with the fact that I was not getting the rest of the loot, and I decided I would have to run back to the ship as fast as possible. I waited for the right moment and took off. I think you can tell from this clip that that was a total Hail Mary. No part of me expected to survive, but somehow I made it back in one piece. Day 9, I looked at the moons and Rend was stormy. Generally, if you're gonna settle for stormy on any planet, it should be Titan, as you can get from the facility to the ship quite quickly on it. But on Rend, it's a massive inconvenience, and you'll probably mess up at least once and end up dead. Worse though, the other moon that wasn't totally fucked was Offense, which is by far my least favorite moon. Honestly, I consider just biting the bullet and going on Foggy Vow or something. I hate Offense because of the outside map mainly, but really it's not that complicated. You just go around a curve and up a hill, but I've already formed a negative association with the map, so I'm not going to change my opinion. I immediately found an air horn in the mazes straight on the left. I saw this jump here, which was guarded by a turret, and only led to the back rooms, which are always empty. After dropping off my full inventory, I went to the right and took a jump, and at the bottom was a turret waiting for me. I was obliterated, losing everything I had to my name. So now the quota is 372, and I have one day on March to get all of that. So the left had a decent bit of loot, but this is possibly the most anxiety I've ever given myself watching a piece of my own gameplay. Yeah, in case you missed it, there was a spike trap looming above my head, ready to crush me at any second, the entire time I was grabbing the cube and the apparatus. I think I should have died there, but unfortunately I didn't. The right was directly connected to the center, so I'm going at double efficiency by exploring the center and the right at the same time. Don't think about it. So, March actually has a couple of fire exits. I believe they can have up to three. So, despite being entirely lost, I have much more hope of weaseling my way out. I heard some steps as I walked past this V-type engine, and was relieved for a second when I saw it was just a loot bug, but then I realized that it was one of the very specific scenarios where a loot bug is actually dangerous. Basically, they take their scrap into their little hidey hole, and if you take their stuff or just get too close to it, they go sicko mode on you. After finding the fire exit, I pretty quickly found the main entrance. I knew I probably wouldn't have enough money to make a quota with this, so I went back in for a little more searching, and in the center found a coil head. The Coilhead is the worst creature in the game, no debate, no discussion, fuck Coilhead. His gimmick is that he stops moving when you look at him, so he's like the Bracken, but worse. It's simultaneously much easier to defend from the Coilhead than the Bracken, but also much more annoying because in single player it's basically game over, and in multiplayer you have to have one person on Coilhead duty if there's one in the facility. Look, I'm sure Zekers knows what he's doing. Uh, so Zekers, if you're watching this video, please leave a comment and explain to me why the Coilhead is so good. Okay, so rant over. I ran out of the exit and began taking stuff out. I deposited the apparatus and a few other small items. However, as I got the remaining items, I saw a forest giant. Looking back at this footage, my one regret was not going out on my own terms. Instead, I cowered in fear and ran from the giant fruitlessly. So I went to Gordian and sold all my stuff. All right, guys, we did good. Let's see if we made quota. As you have not met the profit quota, your performance has been deemed the most tended. Welcome to our disciplinary process. Ah, geez, that was a terrible dream. The company would never kill me just for not making quota. I went experimentation and was very confused when it was stormy. At the time, I was under the impression that was impossible. See, when you create a new save file, the game always has experimentation and assurance with clear weather, and everything else has something wrong. 
However, if you get fired, it respawns you on day one, but it's technically the same file, and the weather on all of the planets is randomized. Theoretically, the best path would be to re-roll the same file by immediately killing yourself as soon as the ship lands on all three days, get fired and repeat until March is available, then just hope it remains available for the next three days of the quota, uh, and then just hope Titan is available for every day for the rest of the game until you reach quota 23. Uh, one of my friends told me quota 23 was like the canon ending of the game, um, but I think they were lying. Anyway, on the left I got a flask and a sheet of metal. The center had nothing but two locked doors for me. The right had a jar of pickles and a large axle, which is okay, but not nearly what I'd hoped for. Realistically, I could have gone for the fire exit, but I decided to call it here. So, the thing about storm weather is that any metal items can be struck by lightning. The items will start buzzing and sparking, and once that starts, you've got about seven seconds to drop everything. By the way, I have a very different definition to this game of what metal is. The flasks, which are definitely made of glass, and the pickles, which are definitely made out of pickles, can also spark. Also, by the way, if stuff in the ship gets struck by lightning, it won't hurt you, but it turns the lights off. Day 12, I'm marchbound. Disappointingly, there were no bees on the exterior, and even more disappointingly, the left of the facility was entirely empty. It also included this room, which is sometimes absolutely packed with loot, but today, zilch. Directly in front from the center, there was a turret, which had malfunctioned, being placed directly against a wall. I realize I never explained how the turrets work. Fucking figure it out. After an hour and a half on the job, I had gotten one piece of scrap, so that's great. Heading back down the center, I spotted a bracket. The paranoia after seeing a bracket is ridiculous. This feels like I'm trying to do some obscure glitch to teleport me across the map by moving in a really specific way. I then saw the bracket and- oh, it's on all fours, it's a furry! While wandering through the halls, I heard the scuttling of a hoarding bug, and I thought it was the sound of the bracken snapping my neck. To die or to live in fear, 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 to die or to live in fear. Taking stuff back to the I left after that, even though I didn't quite get as much as I would have liked. I chose Adamance on day 13, and immediately the facility was treating me well. I technically got more than a full inventory from the left alone, if you kind of key. The center had an easter egg and a fucking nothing else, but connected back to the right. I got two e easter eggs, and when I dropped them at the door, one exploded. So, in case it wasn't obvious, these aren't the only hundred days of this game I've played. They're not even the first hundred days of single player I've played. Hell, I've even played this game with friends in between the days you see in this video. In my experience playing with friends, I died several times to dropping easter eggs and having them explode, which can instantly kill you. That easter egg scared me quite a lot, but about 15 seconds later I went down to the right to get more stuff, and had quite the fright when I got crushed with no warning by the spike trap. The spike trap is fine in concept, but it's inconsistent on exactly how it works. Sometimes it's periodic, and sometimes it just crushes as soon as there's something under it. One time in multiplayer I waited what felt like a minute straight and the spike trap didn't drop, so I assumed it was bugged. Then the second I walked under it, it crushed me. Which is actually total bullshit. Zeekers, do not defend yourself. I do not want to hear it. A threat should not behave entirely differently some of the time, with no other way to distinguish its modes of behavior. I didn't even bother getting ejected, I just quit my save file. <laughs> oh, by the way, that 24 day save file you see began before I even started recording this video, and I cheated in it by hitting Alt F4 every time I died. Uh, more on that later. Day 14, I'm on Bayern. It's one of the weekly challenge moons. Your goal is just to collect as much money as you can in one day. The exterior of the planet is just one of the regular planets recycled. In this case, March. The interiors of the challenge moons are often packed with loot, though a plastic fish and a stop sign after like two hours in the facility doesn't bode well. Outside, I dropped off my things and I began searching the right. I had cleared the left, though I hadn't totally cleared the center, so I'll have to check that. The right had an entire inventory of stuff for me, an easter egg, an air horn, a big bolt, and a toy cube, most of which are pretty high ticket items. By the way, I couldn't fit it in, but there was a beehive around 27,000 millimeters from the main entrance. I searched around the center for a little while, but found nothing of great value. I guess I found a key, but that's borderline useless. I noticed a spore lizard, which isn't dangerous unless you really fuck with them, but after that I heard a crawler, which will kill you for fun. 
There are a lot of colloquial and alternate names for creatures in this game, like the Crawler is often called the Thumper, and the Forest Giants are often called Treeple. Or maybe that's just what Markiplier called them, I haven't watched that much content of this game. Anyway, I took one inventory back to the ship and saw a Baboon Hawk. If they form a herd, they can be quite the danger, but on their own, just don't fuck with them too much and you'll be fine. While returning to get the rest of my loot, I noticed that beehive from earlier. At this point, I didn't know the proper method for collecting beehives, so I just ran straight at it. You're supposed to get them to aggro on you, then move a few feet to either side and scoop it up, then run for your ship until you reach your last bar of stamina, then drop it. Keep running until the bees de-aggro and repeat until you drop it at the back of the ship. Here I just ran in with all of the bravery and stupidity of a 7th grader and brought the hive into the facility. I had no idea what this would accomplish, I assumed the bees would flock to their hive as soon as I exited, but I could save myself from their wrath for now by entering it. I waited a minute, hoping the bees would have roamed far enough that I could sneak the hive out, but instead the bees became wild. Basically, when the bees are separated from their hive, they become wild and begin roaming. When roaming, they will attack anyone they see, and I don't believe they return to their hive even if you bring it back to them. It was only a few seconds after I spotted the roaming bees that I realized they were coming for me, and having already been critically injured from the bringing the hive home, I stood no chance. Side note, I accidentally wrote about this day twice, and since I wrote about them a few real life days apart, I didn't realize they were the same. Partially because I already knew I went on Bayer and on day 15 anyway, but I guess them being so different is credit to my valuable insight and witty quips, which truly transformed the experience into something magical. 15, Bayern, bees, inside, left, bees, right, jump, key, room, loot, fuck, out, bees. Okay, I've done the rule of thirds. All right, day 16, first day on the job. I love it here already. I was on experimentation, which means I'm gonna get fuck all today. The left was much more expansive than I find it usually is, but I'm also pretty sure it connects to the center, so maybe that's it. I got three items in like an hour, which is pretty good for experimentation. Uh, the right was actually pretty simple, and also the center is sealed off, so the left actually doesn't connect there. I never actually cleared out the left of the facility because I was too scared to make jumps, uh, so I took another dip in there. I was specifically hoping not to find a fire exit, as if I leave the fire exit undiscovered, I can get more loot from it later. Here a snare flea was around an inch from my head. They won't kill you, but they make you drop all of your items and then leave you right on the brink of death. I did find the fire exit, and I believe I was pretty lost at the time. It had a V-type engine, which I was already carrying one of, and right by it, an apparatus. The issue is that the room the apparatus was sitting in was fully locked up. Fear not, I have a key by the main entrance, and was able to unlock after bringing my many things down to the entrance. I didn't even start taking stuff back to the ship until 5pm for a sense of how greedy I was getting here. I was waltzing back to the ship with 110 pounds on me at 7pm. It would be just terrible if a giant emerged from the sands. It didn't. Look at that, I collected 312 out of 232. This is because the apparatus isn't counted in the total for the facility, but if you subtract the apparatus's value of 80, you get 232, meaning I got every single piece of scrap in the facility. The most possible money you can get on experimentation is about the same as an average day on March, though, so, you know. Day 17, I went to Adamant's. It's the most profitable of the free planets, I think, or maybe that's March. But it has a catch in that it will take you like an hour and a half to get to the facility from the ship or vice versa if you don't take this rickety bridge. And it seems significantly ricketier than the bridge on Val. The left of the facility was already looking expansive, but after like 10 seconds of exploration, already hearing a landmine and a spike trap, I heard a crawler thumper crawl thumping and decided to go right first instead. I then found a fucked up key that was in front of a door. and had already scoured the right of all of its scrap. While returning, I heard a roar. That's strange, probably not a big deal, and oh my god, I'm going to die. Better get the flask. Yeah, I prioritized the flask over my life. Yeah, I'm an alcoholic. What are you going to do about that? Going to the ship, I had two tulip snakes on my head, so I decided to take the long way, as I only had the stuff that was on me. Tulip snakes are really annoying. If you have more than one on you, they can start flapping and literally fly you around. At one point I had three on me, but shortly after that, they all disappeared for some reason. You can combat them with weapons, but I was without one. I made it back to the ship in one or two pieces and made less than a hundred dollars. I guess I need to offset that really good day on experimentation. Day 18, I went back to Adamant's. My experience with this planet was quite limited at the time, but I gotta say, I'm not a fan of it. Not necessarily that it's, like, bad, I just personally find the bridge mechanic annoying. Immediately on the left was a room with a landmine and a turret. But I saw enough obstacles that I figured I could put my head in and see what loot is in there. In the room was a stop sign, an apparatus, two V-type engines, and bottles. Both of the engines were vaguely behind cover, but the bottles were basically right in front of the turret, so I grabbed an engine and the stop sign on my first trip. 
I got the second engine out, then waited for the turret to be facing away from the bottles before nabbing them, stashing them in the next room over, and then getting the apparatus. I did take a bullet doing that, but I did walk away from it. In the center, I found an entire room full of valuables on top of what I already had at the door, and in the right, I found a hairbrush. I took my first inventory to the ship, I had an apparatus and a few small items, and all of the sudden, shit started blowing up. Those were rockets fired by Old Bird, a defense robot which gets real mad when you take the apparatus. Luckily, it appeared he was fighting some baboon hawks, so I could get my stuff back to the ship. I was hoping to get a second inventory at least, though I knew it was a risk. As I crossed the bridge, I was disappointed to see some baboon hawks had claimed my loot. They were my saving grace, however, as Old Bird quickly arrived and decided to attack them before he attacked me. I checked the bridge once again and Old Bird stared so close to me, if his spotlight were a fire, I would have been singed. I called it there, returning to my ship. Honestly, while I didn't make as much money as I was hoping I would from this day, and I had significantly more money at the main entrance than the 149 I left with, this is possibly the most enjoyable day I've had in this game. The first was a day I played with two of my friends where the quota was a thousand and we had one day on Titan to get it. One of my friends died quite early on, so it was just up to me and my one remaining pal to make a thousand, which we just barely hit. The two of us narrowly surviving. And the third most fun was day 90. Wait for it. I was about to go march and start day 19 when I realized I had to sell my stuff. Guess so much happened yesterday that I forgot my 100% collection day on experimentation was this quota. I knew I couldn't afford Titan, but I thought I might be able to afford rent. My first paycheck came in at 436, and having another inventory of stuff, I came in at a total of 585, which meant I could go to rent with $35 to spare. Plus overtime, I guess. After overtime, I had 649, which means I could go to dine, but I don't want to. Day 19, Rend was clear. The first room on the left had a brass bell. Yeah, I still go left first, even in the mansions. I got a hairbrush and a magic lamp, I mean a fancy lamp, from the next area. I could see some bottles in the next area, but I figured I should get all of this stuff out first. Those bottles were actually the only thing in that area, though. Upstairs, one of the main doors led straight to the kitchen, which, much like my first day on Rend, was totally empty. I dropped my full inventory of stuff at the platform and the stairs, and I grabbed a painting, a mask, and a magic seven ball from that area before leaving my stuff outside. There was more exploration to do, but it was already nearly 3pm, so I figured I should quit while I'm ahead. The forest giant and the masks are by far the two biggest threats on Rend, and the outside ambience is perfect because the gusts of wind act to obscure the snow crunching from an approaching mass, and some of the bassier noises of the wind almost sound like a giant's distant footsteps. I got quite greedy on this day and was out past 7pm. Generally, that's a bad idea, but today, I cut it just close enough to get away unharmed, and with a substantial payday. Literally, as I was dropping my stuff, I heard a dog and had to scramble to shut the door on it. I got 595 today and was going back for seconds on Rend for day 20. Today, Rend had a regular old facility, and I immediately started walking around the perfect way to get lost. I found this room with a chasms and was quickly scared off by the sound of a nutcracker stepping nearby. In another room on the left, I found a fancy lamp and a painting, which I would just have to get back to the main entrance, wherever that may be. I found this room with the boiler thing that I recognized, and so I knew I was close to home. I took way too long to actually find the main entrance, and half past noon, I dropped my first inventory. Off. Going back to the lamp, however, I saw a mask, which basically closes off the entire side of the facility that it was roaming through. The left had nothing for me but a fire exit, and the center was closed off, so I decided to just go back with this one inventory of stuff around 1.30. I got just around 300 from this adventure, which, all things considered, is pretty good. Day 21, Rend was stormy, so I was headed for Adamant's. There was a beehive right at the entrance to the bridge, so I decided to take it, again, not knowing the proper way to pick up a beehive. I dropped it at the side of the ship. Usually you want to take the hive onto the side railing or to the back of the ship, then pull the lever to enter orbit, then get the hive onto the ship by the time the door closes. By the way, it is possible to do two beehives on single player, but not if you put them at the very back of the railing. Anyway, I put the bees a little bit too close to the door for my liking and got injured in the process, but I made it out of the engagement alive. I made it past the bridge without it so much as shaking, but I also realized I might die if the bridge collapses. In the facility, I absolutely dominated this bracken. I also found a room with a key, a bottles, an apparatus, and a chemical jug in the next room over. So the path to this loot-filled room was not complicated, but it was on the longer side, and so I basically had to make trips back and forth to get loot while staying vigilant of the bracken and avoiding all of the other hazards that come with the facility. While coming back with the apparatus, the final trip I should have to take, I got turned around and then noticed a mask. It chased me around as I tried to find my way to the main entrance, or even a fire exit if I had to take it, and I found a rubber ducky, which I took three valuable seconds to pick up. Here I expertly maneuvered around the mask with a jump, which gave me a little distance from it, which was just enough to get it to de-aggro. I then found a spider, which is perfect, exactly what I need. Silver lining, I found the service room, which means I know where I am. 
Dark Cloud lining the silver lining, I need to get past the spider to get to the main entrance. I continued exploring the apparatus room in the vain hope for a fire exit to appear out of thin air. I once again was face to face with a Bracken, the very first of my troubles today, and I found another room which had some solid loot, but even if I survive this, I won't have time to get most of it to the ship. As I returned to the server room, I was next to a hoarding bug and the Bracken was around one second from killing me. At the other end of the server room was a spore lizard, not a huge threat, but it did release its spore gas, which obscures the area, and it obscured it enough that I couldn't see the mask right next to it, which proved to be my undo. This whole day was elevated in its intensity by being the last day of the quota, which now means that really good day on Rand, really bad day on Rand, really good day on experimentation, that really bad day on adamants, that really fun day on adamants, and worst of all, a beehive, were now gone. I decided to land on adamants on company day. I just like to go out with some goddamn dignity. It was flooded and I chose to end myself by drowning. Technically, this counts as day 22 because I went to a moon that wasn't Gordian. Day 23, everything is fucked and everybody sucks, except adamants and assurance, which were fine. Okay, there's three and a half minutes left and I just entered the facility. This will not end well. I went left, which had one locked door, and behind it was a flask. I guess they just put it there to make fun of me for not having a key. I found the fire exit, a yield sign, bottles, and a key in the center, but I quickly got lost. There weren't any pressing threats like with 21, but I still desperately wanted to have my bearings. I did eventually find my way back and dropped off all of my stuff before unlocking the door on the left, which proved quite valuable. I dropped the stuff from the left off, and for some reason, despite having a fine haul for day one, decided to keep exploring. I took this jump straight out from the center and totally missed the beam. Yeah, I deserve that. Day 24, I went straight to experimentation. I was pulling the lever before the speaker even started talking. The left was blocked off, which is unusual, so I took the center and found some chasms with some light loot. In the corridors, which split off from the chasms, I found a large axle and jumped over some sludge, real clean. And then I jumped over it again, not clean at all. I was slightly lost, but didn't struggle too much getting back home. I considered leaving as I deposited my stuff around 3 p.m., but it's experimentation, so I I decided to explore a little more and return to the outdoors with an apparatus at 4 p.m. For day one on experimentation, this was good, but I actually decided to poke my head through the fire exit, which was near the chasms, which still had a few pieces of loot lying around. It was 5 p.m. and I knew there could be a forest giant, but I had survived it once before, so if need be, I'll survive it again. I also had another large axle which I left for just past 8 p.m. because I fear nothing. I was walking to the ship just before 9.30 and noticed a dog in the vicinity. I rushed to close the door and made it back just in time. Based on the radar, it appears two dogs and a forest giant spawned in the time between the last axle I dropped off and this one. Day 25, we're a quarter of the way through, and just as a heads up, the days may start to get a little shorter here. Not literally in terms of how long I spend on each day, but in terms of the runtime of each day in the video. There's less new stuff to explain, and besides, if I went into full detail for everything for the whole video, it would get a little monotonous. Day 25, I was on adamants, as I would like to go to Titan on the second quota, so I need money. Though really, if I need money I should go to assurance on day one. I had gotten a full inventory and still had plenty to explore, but as I was about to drop my stuff off I heard a crawler. It was far enough away that I deemed it not an immediate threat, but too close for me to be comfortable continuing to explore. So I just ran back with my loot. As I walked across the bridge I noticed it was about to collapse with just enough time to run back and actually avoid falling into the pit, which I just went down normally anyway. On day 26, literally the only planet that didn't have a weather condition was Dine, which I can't afford and wouldn't go to anyway. I opted for foggy experimentation. Of course, on the one day where my coordination is most impaired, the latter I'd usually take was blocked. There were bees, but I realized the fog may result in me not making it to the ship with them. So I went back literally empty handed. I collected nothing, not a single dollar on day 26. Selling my stuff, I only sold 289. I knew the two other large axles I had wouldn't be nearly enough to afford rent, let alone Titan. Day 27, I was on March and there were two beehives here. There's one minute left in my recording, so this isn't gonna go well. I got the hive to the back of the ship right as I ran out of stamina and was already injured, so I did not walk away from the encounter. Day 28, I was on adamants as I have two days left to get 240 credits. That shouldn't be too hard, but I'm gonna err on the side of caution. And by that I mean err on the side of danger, because danger is money. By the way, I played a lot of quite heavily modded Lethal Company after the recording of this video, in between writing, and when I returned to writing for this day, I was like, oh my god, it's such a simple and thoughtfully made game, the facility doesn't explode when I pull the apparatus. 
Oh, also, I'll talk more about modded lethal later. I poked my head around a little more, but ultimately left with the apparatus and a few other pieces of scrap on hand. Sprinting with a 74-pound haul and two baboon hawks at the end quickly collapsed the bridge. This would be fine, but as I was walking up the hill to my ship, a fucking giant emerged from the ground. It initially seemed it might be another case of the baboon hawks distracting the big bad from destroying me, but this time as I attempted to sprint past it, the giant prioritized me. I do actually wonder if I waited long enough, would the baboon hawks have killed the giant? I know they can die, and I could see and hear the baboon hawks nipping it, so maybe I could have lived, but it probably wouldn't be worth counting on. Day 29, I basically had to go to Adamant's or March, and I chose the former. In the facility, the left side was bare empty and the center only had bottles. The right had one of these annoying circular rooms with a tube in the middle, and there was a steam leak right next to it, which is just a recipe for getting lost. Multiple times today, I came quite close to getting crushed by a spike trap. I found the chasms and was out of space, so I headed back. Apparently some local delinquents had stolen my bottles, so I just decided to head back to the ship with what I had. As I returned, I saw where these criminals had taken my bottles, and after dropping my stuff off, I decided to see if I could retrieve them. Well, that's a little unfair now, isn't it? Day 30 is experimentation, even though it doesn't have to be. I didn't yet realize while recording that assurance is way better for money than experimentation, and always clear on a new save. Outside was the cheapest beehive in history, and inside, Big Bolt. I explored this so-called loot room, and it had a big bolt and a wedding ring, which is actually okay. I ran back to the mazes of corridors, and for experimentation, I was actually going to do quite well. I had determined that the spike trap was motion activated, and I briefly tried edging it, but that didn't work, so I just ran through it, and it killed me, because of course it did. Day 31, I reset. I have nothing to lose. I finally went Assurance today. To my understanding, up until now, Assurance was only a little better than Experimentation for money, but as one of my friends showed me, you literally just walk behind the ship, and from there, it's pretty easy. The value thing was also proven wrong, because you know that loot room from Day 30? That had about 80 bucks for me when I searched it, and when I searched that type of room today, it had like 200. The rest of the facility was decent, but that first loot room was actually crazy. I came out at 2 p.m. to begin bringing stuff home and spotted a dog outside. I realize I haven't actually explained how they work, but basically, they can't see you, but if you make noise, I believe including speaking through your mic, they will hear it and kill you. While returning from my next inventory, I guess I either forgot it was there or assumed it was far enough away that I wouldn't have to worry, and it aggroed on me right as I climbed the ladder, though I did narrowly escape it. After it stopped trying to eat me alive, I decided I would jump down. I wasn't sure if the noise of me landing would alert it, though. Luckily, it didn't, and I snuck away. As soon as my soul perceived that it was far enough away that it wouldn't hear me, I started sprinting and ultimately made it back to the ship unharmed. As I was leaving, I looked at my radar. That huge fucking red dot is a sandworm. I think you can figure out their mechanic. I briefly considered going to offense on day 32, until I realized that was clear, so why in God's name would I go to offense? In the facility, I found a stop sign and this loot room which only had one flask sitting on the ground. Here, a turret tried to pull one over on me, and here, despite having ample warning, a turret still nearly killed me. I found a yield sign here, which is one of the most ridiculously heavy items in the game. Like, it weighs 42 pounds, but is worth the same as any other scrap. It's not like a cash register or a gold bar where it's heavy, but it's very expensive. It's just inconvenient. Not to mention, the stop sign is significantly lighter while being the exact same for utility and roughly the same price. Luckily, the entire remainder of my full inventory was only 3 pounds, so I wasn't too slow. When depositing my goods, I dropped an easter egg and it exploded, sending me in the direction of the stable bridge. Were it not for the two items still in my inventory, this would have been a brilliant time save. It's quarter to six and I'm going out again, getting greedy. Back at the entrance, I had 62 pounds on me and I had to leave a hairbrush behind. I figured that I'd take the stable bridge uh, so as to not die. And despite every bone in my body telling me I was about to die, I returned to the ship alive and well. 248 collected, that's alright. Day 33, I am going inside of Adam. Across the bridge, I got a big ol' hunk of junk, and like my 12th sign this run. While dropping off things, a tulip snake landed on my head, but I realized I could actually grab the stop sign and kill him with it. This facility was extremely boring, I don't think I ran into a single thing. Because this day was very boring, I'm going to talk about how this game doesn't really do combat super well, and how I think that's intentional. The movement in this game is generally a little floaty. It's not horrible, but I did notice it when I started playing. I believe this was an intentional choice as it's a pretty easy thing to avoid. All of the weapons in this game take time to raise and most of the enemies have a very specific number of hits they can take, which make it possible, but not easy to kill them. Additionally, the weight of the weapons and the fact that they have an extra slot makes it so that combat is typically not something you'd voluntarily do but instead typically a last resort if you just happen to have a weapon on you as you're about to die. 
The time it takes to hit something, the similar number of hits you can take with most enemies, and the unclear hitboxes make combat extremely stressful and rarely something you would choose to do. There is the shotgun, but that also takes extra weight, and a slot itself, as well as another slot for each shotgun shell you carry. The shotgun also has terrible accuracy, and even while holding it, you don't have crosshairs, and there aren't iron sights, so you still have to be very close to your enemy while using the shotgun. You get the shotgun and shells from killing nutcrackers, by the way. I never did it in this video, but it's not actually too hard if you have stun grenades. Anyhow, a thought bit me. Let's get on with it. Day 34, you thought I was gonna stop the accent, did you? Well, you thought wrong. Assurance doesn't sound funny when you talk like this, unlike offense. I keep saying all these words in this funny voice and I keep accidentally going Australian while I'm trying to record. This is a nightmare. Valve leak, I wonder if it's Half-Life 3. The common theme with New Englanders is that we aren't funny, we just talk funny. Third, there were actually a lot of turrets in here, so I turned back. It's 6 p.m. and now all I see are baboon hawks outside, so I will return for my hard and garbage. Now I'm just becoming Peter Griffin. <sighs> I left. Well, day 35, we're going to add him in for some scraps, so that'll be fun. Woo, a full inventory, how fortuitous. Whoops, dropped an Easter egg, good thing that didn't blow up. Jar of pickles, very nice. Now today powered out very well, so I'm going to take all of my stuff back to the ship. Well, the bridge collapsed, but that's no big deal now. There was a forest giant here who will eat me alive, but I've made peace with this, so that's all right. I'm real sorry to anyone from anywhere in the United States of America, but I'm gonna keep going on day 36. I instinctively started typing in adamants, but I realized that this is a new run, so I've only got assurance and experimentation, of which I chose the former. Well, gosh darn that there's a head on a spike, partner. Well, that there's a turret, but I've built my fair share of those in my day. Shouldn't be a problem. My goodness gracious, I didn't notice that there firearm, which I have a lot of myself. Taking some bottles back to the ship, I plan to get blackout drunk tonight. I considered re-entering for some more scrap, but what with the turret situation, I figured the wiser choice might just be to head on home. After hitting this here doohickey, the ship took off. My recording was 18 minutes long, so I figured I must be on that moon quite a while, but in fact, in fact, I was just AFK in the ship for 10 whole minutes after I departed. Day 37, we are going to march, and we will beat the Americans to it. There were no bees. Terrible. I found the stop sign, it's just like a dash cam video. Big boat sounds very fun. Landmine. Can I even do this? Yeah, I think I can. I found bottles of vodka. I'm going to get blackout drunk tonight. This is my favorite bit from any video I've ever done. A bracken was like five inches, no, five centimeters from snapping my neck here. It would have been a shame as I have so much shit on me. I was a tad lost, but as I dropped off the loot, I realized it was 5.30 p.m., so I must return to my vessel. I was attacked by a rabid baboon hawk, but it did not critically injure me. But I must be careful. I witnessed a dog emerge from the ground in front of me, which means I will need to get to the ladder, then run up as fast as I can to the ship. A baboon hawk did push me to critical injury right as I boarded the ship, but I did enter and close the door. Day 38, I am done embarrassing myself for your entertainment, you piece of shit. I went back to march and back to left. Left left was empty, but left right was center. I found a turret which I had gotten stuck in a wall and a V-type engine. I was a tiny bit lost, but I found my way home quickly. After dropping off an engine and a large axle, I got properly lost. Right as I found my way back though, I saw a spider coming from the other way, and it hit me once for a critical injury. This basically meant I was going back no matter what, but after bringing back the only two items I had gathered, I noticed a beehive and idiotically decided to go after it. I knew I had already made quota, but hoped that with this I could go to tighten her rent. I actually might have made it back, but I made a fatal error in that I stopped sprinting to grab the hive, and the bees killed me in seconds. Day 39, I made a mistake. I left after it had saved the new day, but before it had saved the scrap loss. That was the last day of the quota, but when I got back to record more the next day, I had forgotten I'd died at all, so once again I've accidentally cheated. I sold just the quota and went back to March. There was a beehive a bit far from the ship, but nothing crazy, and it was worth 62 credits, so I figured I'd only really have to grab it if I'd gotten very little scrap otherwise. And at like 1pm I had left the fire exit. Outside the main door I had a pretty valuable inventory stash, so I figured I'd go back to the ship, drop off my stuff, get the beehive, then go back to the main entrance and get my stuff. And it should be like a 250 value day. This plan went perfectly, though I did take some damage from the bees because I'm still doing them totally wrong. Day 40, I got sick of March, so I decided to go to Assurance. The walk to the main entrance was rather ordinary, but inside there were quite a few turrets. At the door, I deposited a large axle and a tea kettle, nearly dying to the turret directly on the right a couple of times, and after that I decided to go deeper into the facility. 
I found a room with a toy cube and a clown horn guarded by a turret, and I got those. Directly after that, I found the apparatus room, and when I went to the other side of the room, I realized that there was a turret in there. The door close to me was locked, however, so I didn't have time to get back, and I died. Day 41, I'm continuing the illegal run, back on Assurance. The quota's not too bad yet, but with one day on Assurance, I certainly won't be able to go to Titan by quota 3. So I've basically been handed my death sentence. I got a mask and an egg in this room, but the facility was actually terrible for loot. That, a large axle, and a cookie pan were all I got from the first loot haul I did. I made a return trip for one key, but after that I realized it wasn't too late, and if I get a lucky end of the day, I could maybe get some more loot in and survive. I went back with the one key I had just brought to the ship, and before I could use the key or pick up any loot, a crawler was harassing me and I had to leave. I searched around hoping for a beehive, but I didn't find anything and left, definitely not having enough to meet the quota. Day 42, it's a new run, so I'm not cheating anymore. I went to experimentation, and on the left I found a clown horn and a key directly on top of a landmine. I saw this locked door leading to a loot room and was briefly dejected before realizing I have landmine key. Of course, I'm on experimentation, so it literally just had a big bolt and a large axle. I searched around and realized there was only one path forward, which I did take. On my first trip, I saw this locked door with an engine on the other side of it, which felt a little like speaking to your husband who went to jail for embezzling corporate money and visitation. Uh, but I eventually found a key with which I could break him out. As I was leaving, the hoarding book just would not fuck off, even though it was nowhere near any of the loot I had grabbed, and eventually just tried to attack me anyway. It quickly backed off, but while I ran from it, a sneer flea dropped on my head. Luckily, because the bug never hit me, I was critically injured instead of killed. After making my first loot run, I saw a beehive to the ship's right. It was worth 135, which was really good, but recalling my experience on day 38, I think I'll have to hold off. I returned the remaining scrap to the gentle hands of the company and departed the planet. I saw a huge red dot on the radar as I was leaving. At the time, I wasn't sure what it was, but I believe now it's a sandworm. Day 43, I don't know why, but that run is gone, and I'm going back to experimentation. Once again, a locked door separated me from an engine, but this time I would find no keys with which to unlock it. I also found the apparatus, which I chose to retrieve last due to its proximity to the main entrance. This is a very textbook Lethal Company day. Loot a little, get the apparatus, check the fire exit, you know the drill. I actually did find a key, but I figured at this point it would be a waste to get that engine. I did totally abandon a V-type engine that I must have forgot about as soon as I put it down. I was scanning my stuff when new creature data popped up, and that was quite curious, so I looked behind me and noticed a bracket. I then chose to return, and I did. Look, I can only say, yeah, I went over and did each load of loot one at a time so many times before I just need to skip it. You get the picture. If something interesting happened, I talk about it. Day 44, I'm marching. Not Martian, marching. It's March. I just need to say right now, stuff will start getting a little bit more interesting later, but I know that just going to the same five moons every single day is getting very boring. I eventually intend to do a modded Lethal Company 100 days, so hopefully I can imbue a little more variety into that when the day comes to do it. I narrowly avoided a turret here and jumped directly into slime with no consequences. I would have loved to spend more of the days in this video on Titan or Rend or the Hidden Planets, but unfortunately, I have a kind of large complaint, but one I have no way to resolve, and it's that single-player Lethal Company is really hard. This is because of two main reasons. Firstly, because you're the only player who can collect scrap, so even if Titan generates $2,000, you might only collect a quarter of that on your own. The second, and more significant reason Single Player Lethal Company is so hard, is because of item loss on death. You see, the game is clearly developed with multiplayer in mind, and in a lobby with four people, if one person dies, nothing really happens other than a small fine, but if all four people die, you lose all of your scrap. This isn't really a problem, because it's rare that your full lobby gets wiped, but on single player, all it takes is your death. Which effectively means you need to get a crazy amount of scrap while also not dying a single time if you want to reach the later quotas. The highest quota I've ever gotten on a multiplayer run was like 9, by the way, and I'm pretty sure the highest single player quota I've ever gotten to was later in this video. You may think to just remove the scrap loss mechanic, but that interferes with another mechanic, which is early selling. Earlier in the quota, you can still sell your stuff to the company, but you can't sell it for quite as much. These two mechanics work together so that you actually have an incentive to sell your stuff earlier and sacrifice some profit. 
This is nice, but in my opinion it should really be tweaked, because for me it's too unsustainable to sell early in single player where you are already heavily limited in how much scrap you can get, but it's kind of pointless in multiplayer where if you have two or three players, team wipes are rare enough that you typically don't factor it into your plans. Anyway, now that I've yapped for one hour, it's day 45 and I'm going to Val, which may be my favorite of the three planets. I found a loot room devoid of loot and another root loom with a fire axe, fire axe? A fire exit and a cookie pan. I dropped off that pan, a whoopee cushion, a large axle, and a key before finding the chasm room with a plastic fist. Fist? 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 Fit? Fish. A plastic fish. After searching the area a little, I realized I missed a chemical jug, which makes a great sound when you drop it. As I moved back for the main entrance, I saw a spider, and I decided to explore a little more, in the hope that it would move away from the path. After I found a jar of pickles, the spider had fucked off, so I could begin making trips to and fro the ship. I narrowly avoided collapsing the bridge and brought all of my things to my vessel. It's quite a time and I may actually have gathered enough to go to Rend, or possibly Titan. I sold everything but a large axle and a chemical jug and had 552 credits for my name. Just barely enough for Rend. 58 for a bonus and Rend was clear. Perfect. Alright, so the first day I've left the free moons in so long, and I forgot to record. I have nothing for day 46. Well, technically I captured the very end, so I can tell you I only collected 231 credits. Fortunately, Rend was still clear on day 47. The bottom floor only had two doors, one of which was a dead end, and the other led to a locked door. The top floor also only had two doors, one of which led to a dead end, and the other opened up into a larger mansion. I found this room with the two fancy lamps right off the bat, and I heard a nutcracker cracking his nuts just down the way. Here I ran across a hallway that I knew had a spike trap, and it came about a tenth of a second away from killing me. As I ran out with the last lamp and a hairdryer, I heard the nutcracker, and it legitimately sounded like the noise was coming from inside of my body. Like, it was terrifying. For a second, I thought he was cracking my nuts. I made two very unsettling and stressful loot trips, and left at 3pm, having made exactly 100 more credits than I did yesterday. Honestly, even if it was just a hundred bucks tomorrow, I could probably still make it to Titan next quota. Rend was still clear, so I chose to triple dip. It was still the mansion on day 48, which is generally easier to navigate, but I'm less familiar with it. I was hearing footsteps as I stood still, footsteps which sounded quite close, which told me there was a mask afoot. And so I basically gave up for this day, but I figured I would just check a little more in the downstairs areas than head back. However, as I was searching, a nutcracker entered the area, and I made a break for the entrance. And while it did pop me, I did just narrowly escape and took all three pieces of my scrap home. I didn't record the selling for this quota, but I know I met it and sold enough to go to Titan. After climbing a million flights of stairs to reach the main entrance, practically the first thing I saw was a coil head. It was right next to a laser pointer, so I tried shining that in its eyes, but that didn't work. Here I wanted to make a jump, but the coil was watching me, so I risked it and it hit me once, but I made the jump, surviving despite being critically injured. That area turned out to be 100% entirely empty, so I did a badass backwards jump and got it perfectly before retrieving a large axle and dropping my stuff off outside. After getting all of my stuff back in one trip, I checked the fire exit, and I heard a nutcracker, but as it turned out, the only door to the room I was in was locked, so I didn't have to worry about it. This room actually had some crazy loot, and I took it all back down to the ship. Day 50, Titan is still clear. After dropping off an inventory, I had an extra engine to haul back, and I got jump scared by a spore lizard. Fortunately, they don't do anything, but it was scary. There were literally four items in this one cabinet. I feel like I'm cheating. I found a whoopee cushion, perhaps a room away, and then I was considering going back, and I heard a nutcracker, so that's great. I had $650 outside of the door, but I heard a giant outside, so I made sure I was getting the most value on each trip if I could only get one or two of them in. The first trip I barely even heard the giant, but after making it up to the final staircase I heard a mask walking, and for some reason I decided I should still try to get the money, and right as another one rounded the corner, it killed me. I didn't even check the weather because I pretty much had to go to Titan on day 51. I think it was foggy, which doesn't matter because it's Titan. The first few minutes were the same, and after getting out maybe 5 items, I heard a nutcracker and started getting a mite lost in the maze. But eventually I did find my way to the fire exit. After returning to the fire exit just to check nearby rooms, I saw the haunted girl and spent a minute trying to figure out the most efficient way to bring back the loot because I might only have one trip. Fortunately, I got in two, leaving just some bottles behind, and at this point I might have enough to make quota, but not to make Titan. I sold every piece of scrap to my name and couldn't even afford rent. I held out hope for a good overtime bonus, and got three dollars. 
Worse still, everything except experimentation was bad. So today, my time is barely worth the scraps of loot I'll be getting. I got an Easter egg here, which I'll probably explode and die to, but it's worth a little money at least. My inventory was full, which was quite fortunate, but I then found the apparatus alongside two other items, and somehow I didn't realize I was only carrying two of them along with the apparatus. I did find the fire exit, and after dropping off a dustpan and a metal sheet, I heard a spider and decided I'm probably not going to get much more out of here anyway. I've twisted my bones up on this here fall and made my first trip to the ship, then my second, then I left. For an unmotivated day on experimentation, I've done worse. 53, we're halfway through. What? I had a whole gamut of planets and chose a sure ants. Oh my gamut, is that an ant? No, that's a snare flea. Surely you flee when you see the flea on the sea, Ling. The snake's room had bling. I fling this door shut. Whoops. 54, just past the door, I found a horn. I adore the horn, but was horribly scorned to leave it outdoors. Three items in tow, I went to my home. No monsters roamed, but lo and behold, I was below the quo. So I headed indoors and found items galore, but alas, I'm a whore for more, and so I explored till I could not know more. Bracken bonjour, what do you do for lore? I went home on Gordon off warded creatures until I made it aboard. Company, work with me. I know no money, but I need somebody behind me to sublimely support me in these trying timeies. As you have not met the profit quota, your performance has been deemed below standard. Welcome to our disciplinary process. Insurance. I could use some of that. What a tragic run. Are you fu- Day 56 is a new universe and I'm going insurance again. Very normal day today, other than a crawler and a turret, I didn't see anything particularly notable. Though I did spot some highly venomous manticoils as I carried back the apparatus. Taking back the final load of loot, I heard a sandworm a rumbling, but made it back to the ship for a decently profitable, normal day. I'm gonna be honest, for most of this video, I really wish I had played a little better, just so I got the opportunity to see more of the game. This would be far easier to do in a multiplayer game, and alongside modded, a multiplayer 100 days of Lethal Company is one of my favorite ideas that I'm considering for more lethal content, so let me know if you'd like to see that. As for modded, I might do a video where I add a mod every single day, and for the multiplayer video, I'd probably do the live commentary, you know, more Let's Play style content, interspersed with voiceover stuff like this. And now, folks, it is 57. This is sort of the problem with doing these kinds of videos on these more repetitive games. I fell into this trap with the Balloon City 6 video way back at the start of 2023, where I kind of did the same shit every game, and at the time, I just don't think I was, and I still kind of don't think I am, talented enough at comedy writing or editing for it to still work. So with that being said, I'm gonna start glazing over some of the days where nothing interesting happens and I'm just on the same planets doing the same shit, because I can't be bothered writing about them and you can't be bothered watching them. Also, I fell down. 58, solid day on assurance. I got myself a couple inventories of loot and was harassed by a sandworm, but still made it home at 7.30 and made 500 bucks. That's what I'm talking about when I say glazing over. 59, I was back on assurance and I took fall damage jumping out of the ship. After finding an apparatus, I heard some stepping, but it sounds like it was just a hoarding bug, which is annoying but harmless if I'm just a little bit careful. I made a decent bit of money in like three hours and took it all back to the ship, making for a pretty short but acceptably profitable day, particularly for Quota 1. It's Val on day 60. I took the rickety bridge over and found the apparatus pretty much directly to the left of the main entrance and a locked door directly in front. I had a key from the left, so I unlocked it to discover some more light loot before getting attacked by a snare flea. After that, I figured my best course of action was flight, seeing as a tap on the shoulder would reduce me to a pile of bones. So I took as much as I could over in one trip. That was three items and a key, because I have not exactly gotten my money up today. Right as I departed, I heard the distant echoes of a forest giant. I sold even more than I needed for Titan, because the powers that be have blessed me up today. I even started to stack some bread in the 401k. I'm like one of those alpha male billionaire dudes. I spent nearly half of my four minute recording for day 61 just sitting in the ship, but after I got out, I think I spent even less time actually exploring before getting murdered and sent directly to hell by a turret. Day 62, we're going Titan again. For some reason, today in particular, I noticed the skybox with a strangely Earth-like sky and cranes. I'm curious if these have any significance, or if Zeekers just thought it would look cool. Right out the gate, I found this room full of loot and stared death in the face. While bringing back the next load of loot, I had to pray the turret wouldn't kill me through these boxes, and it didn't. Just past that, I found another room with some crazy loot, and two runs through and I hadn't even grabbed everything. After grabbing the next inventory, I went to start bringing stuff back to the ship, and when I stood over a ledge, I saw a dog on the stairs. Now, if this happened today, I think I would have had an entirely different approach, but I'd like to just ask you, what the fuck was I supposed to do here? By the way, if you're in a situation like this, you can jump onto the lights on the walls just to the left of the stairs, and I'd recommend then jumping onto the top light, then onto the platform, then to the ship. 
then close the door as fast as possible, and then leave. Once again, on day 63, I have one day on Titan to make quota, but I really need at least 400 and a bit to go to Rend if I want any hope of this run going anywhere. I got a quick apparatus, which I chose to leave for a minute, and could see a fucky air leak cutting through the wall. Right when I started exploring to the right of the door, a crawler materialized on my ass. I got hit once while escaping, but made it outside. I ran to the fire exit, which had exactly one door leading to it, which was locked and also behind a spike trap. I did the first load of loot and grabbed a key off the ship to unlock the door. I got some teeth, a bell, and a painting. As much as it hurt me, I did decide to leave with just that. I really wanted the apparatus, but it just was not worth the risk. As I left with my goods, I heard a giant, and the distortion on my screen as I walked into the ship told me it was quite close. I collected 340, not terrible considering the circumstances, but not enough for rend. I sold every dollar to my name and resigned that unless the overtime bonus is so low it miscalculates and makes it negative and overflows and loops around so I get like 16 trillion credits or whatever the integer thing is, I don't think I'll make it anywhere special. All right, day 64, we have jack shit experimentation it is. I'm realizing it's this late into the video and I don't think I've made a political joke or commentary yet. If you're over 18 and a US citizen, please vote for Kamala Harris in the upcoming United States presidential election. Project 2025 is some serious shit and under Trump, almost everything outlined in the document will come to fruition. Kamala Harris is a problematic candidate for her history as an attorney general and San Francisco district attorney, with some of her rulings being very questionable. Additionally, while she hasn't said anything about it, her being Biden's VP tells me she will more likely than not fund Israel's war crimes against Palestinian civilians. But even with all that, she's better than the United States being under the rule of a bigoted, power-hungry conservative who would kill all trans people and establish himself as a dictator if given the chance. Also, he would support Israel anyway. Kamala is clearly the lesser evil. Anyway, I died to a slime. Day 65, believe it or not, something not boring as hell is happening. I'm going to Embryo. I mean, Umbreon. I mean, Underdog. I mean, Hand to God. Embryon. It's a moon made of amethyst and absolutely covered in old birds. I mean, there are like 40 of the guys. I'm not kidding. I crossed the Amethyst Plane rather uneventfully, and immediately found three items in this room which seemed quite helpful. I also found several spike traps. After dropping that stuff off, I ran to the right where I found this room full of loot, including an apparatus, but with a turret standing guard in the middle. I'm pretty good at evading turrets, but I did not notice the spike trap directly next to it. What a great sound that just made. Day 66, I'm back on Arbor Day and it's foggy. So to my understanding, the hidden moons are sort of testing grounds for potential additions. And in that case, man, they need to make Old Bird not just seemingly randomly activate sometimes. I went in and looted boringly, nearly died to a turret and found this empty loot room, collected more shit and I'm literally falling asleep. Literally, I'm writing this at nearly 5 a.m. I eventually got lost and here I didn't even realize this turret was aiming at me. In my lost stupor, I noticed this orange light beaming through the wall. Maybe it's nothing, but it could be a fire exit. Here I was incredibly close to dying to a spike trap, but right after, I found the fire exit. I scouted around it, but for some reason I decided to go back where I just came from instead of just cutting my losses and leaving. No idea how this turret didn't kill me, it absolutely should have, but it at least pushed me to go back to that fire exit. It was now 6pm in the overworld and I saw old birds flying around the sky. I made it for a minute, but I eventually got spotted and got pushed quite close to the main entrance, which is safety at least for a minute, but while I was trying to enter I got pushed into a corner and exploded. Day 67 was ass. Literally, I'm on assurance. Also, I died to a turret literally 15 seconds after I entered the facility. Same shit, day 68. I near immediately found a cash register in the apparatus, guarded by a turret, of course. I dropped off the register, then took a large axle and some pickles from these loot rooms ahead of me. I was like six inches from stepping on this landmine and immediately got eyed up by a turret. Honestly, with the cash register, I'll probably do fine for quota one. So I just retrieved the apparatus and walked back to the ship with 150 pounds on me. Quite close to my ship, I heard the rumbling of a sandworm, and I dropped the cash register to run for my life, but I still died to the worm. Day 69, I went to assurance and I died. 70, God is not present with us on this day. Company, why have you forsaken me? Day 71, it's experimentation and I'm having a great time. Day 72, I'm going experimentation. I have very low standards for how much money I need. I just want to live. Honestly, looting inside uh, was very boring. I checked a few rooms, got a few inventories of loot, and eventually found the fire exit and an engine and bottles near it. I began running to the ship with my first inventory, and what the fuck is a vein shroud? Yeah, those were added in V55, which was in public beta during this gameplay. Though as of this video coming out, V60 should be the current version. 
According to the description of the vein shroud, it's got lore, or whatever, and also it's tied to the kidnapper fox. I have some strong and unoriginal opinions on the kidnapper fox, but I'll get into those later. Behind the ship, I found some bees and a $106 hive, so I took it for myself, and with it, I actually got 291 out of 225 potential money. Day 73, I'm on offense. Right out the gate, I heard a crawler. I knew I should at least get a little scrap from this venture, so I got a couple of things out before getting lost in the mazes, but I found my way out quickly enough. Right at that moment, though, I also came face to face with the crawler and broke for the door. I got out with some loot and a couple flesh wounds, but I still totaled 170 from today. For 74, I'm headed to Val. I have enough money, all I need to do is survive today, and I can sell to the company and we all live happily ever after. I looted up and saw the glow of a fire exit light on these pipes. I have no idea where it is. I then got lost, found a shit ton of loot, and right next to it, I found the fire exit. I brought my things out and directly in front of the fire exit found a beehive. Yes, this hurts me as much as it hurts you. How did I not figure out the method sooner? Near the end of the riverbed, I found yet another beehive, and I want you to watch this and confirm it's bullshit. Yeah, there's no way I was in range of that hive. That's ridiculous. Day 75, it's a new run, and uh... Day 76, it's assurance. I actually survived this one. I was playing it safe, and while I did find a few loot rooms, it was still a little dry. The fire exit was near, and I did get some acceptable loot, but before bringing any of it back, I wanted to check if it's actually possible to get to the fire exit on Assurance through the world, and it's not. I took home this first inventory, and it turns out it was also my last inventory, so I left. However, if you rev the engine in park, like at all, the entire car blows up. You know, it's the same in real life too. Day 79, I did the thing again where I accidentally recover all of my scrap and it sends me to the next day. Uh, don't worry, it won't matter. I went back to Empirical, which was foggy, and it was covered in vein shrouds, which made me realize the Kidnapper Fox can actually spawn on Endometriosis. The left of the facility had many a spike trap and landmine for me, but was peppered with loot, so I'm not too mad. I actually got two full inventories out of here. I began returning with stuff soon after, and it didn't look like any birds had been awakened, but I soon witnessed the light of God coming out of the shadows, and was engaged in a terrifying battle for my life, one which I lost. Day 80, I'm going Assurance. Honestly, this run was kind of doomed with my waste of $400 on a cruiser, so I wouldn't be too mad if I died here, but I actually did okay, bringing back an apparatus and some other good stuff. However, at the ship, I heard screaming, and as I walked closer, I saw a little bitch on board. It snatched me, which made me drop all of my items, and after I resisted long enough for it to let go, it snatched me again, and I somehow got away that time too. But then after I got away, he tried to snatch me again from inside the ship, but I started the ship to get away. This sucks. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't think it was intended to be like this, especially considering that in V60, the kidnapper fox was temporarily removed, but it's so bad. You're supposed to be able to attack it and then run away and it will flee, 
Uh, but that doesn't fucking work. It's not like the Snare Flea either, where if it snatches you, you can attack it, because you drop all of your items when you get snatched, and if it drags you at all, you can't pick them back up. The thing is, I get it's removed for now, I get that if it's added back, it'll probably be in a much more finished state, and it is also really good to see that Zekers listens to the community feedback, or at the very least is able to be critical of his own games, but it is kind of concerning that it got into the game in a, such a broken state in the first place, and remained in the most recent official version of the game for over a month before V60 came out. It makes it seem like there was very little or improper playtesting before the update came out. Anyway, it's day 81 and I'm going offense, so nothing fun will happen today. I'm not sure how I took no damage from this fall, though. This run was boring, but returning with my first of two inventories, I heard and saw a kidnapper fox. However, it kept away from me as I dropped off all of my items. Back at the company building, I sold up to 596 credits, but after buying a welcome mat, I had 546, so I was hoping on a $4 or greater overtime bonus, which I got, uh, but had much less room for error than I thought I would. So yeah, day 82, I'm going to rend. God, I've been to so few fun moons this video. This is like a breath of fresh air. After finding a tea kettle in the first room, I found a fire exit pretty quickly. And honestly, I have no idea how to get to the ship from the fire exit on Rend. After a couple of minutes and maybe $300 collected, I heard a nutcracker prancing around and made the tough decision to go back. I then realized the Nutcracker was actually on the other side of this locked door, but I don't want to stick around to confirm my theory. After dropping off the last of my stuff, I heard and saw on the radar an eyeless dog stalking me, so I probably couldn't have gotten another load of scrap even if I tried. Rend was still good on day 83, so I'm double dipping. I burned a couple of minutes just getting a painting and a bell. I got a comedy mask and a wedding ring on my next trip before hearing a spider and getting freaked out and deciding to go home with just one inventory, which should still be worth like 250. Day 84, Rend was bad, so I headed for March, and right out of the ship I heard a kidnapper fox, so that's wonderful. Money was decent today, though. I got a full inventory after like a minute, and found the apparatus quite quickly, too. Again, today was very normal. I grabbed those few things, took them back, avoided the bastard fox, and was homebound. This time, selling everything actually did get me enough money to go to Titan. In fact, I had just over $1,000 to my name, so I started contributing to my retirement fund. Then every planet, literally every planet, was weathered, so I opted for foggy experimentation. What a good addition this was. Day 86, I can still go to Titan because I didn't lose that much money. Uh, also, it was Eclipse last round, and I could have gone, but I did have some experiences with Eclipse Titan. Wait, that hasn't happened yet. Right out of the gate, I found this room with like 15 items, and by 15, I mean 5, as well as a key. So if I just went back with that stuff, I'd probably cover a decent portion of the quota, but I'm dreaming bigger than that. For a minute here, I had two pairs of teeth on me. Well, three, I guess. I checked the fire exit and grabbed an old phone, right as the ghost girl showed up, which is pretty much a 100% you have to leave right now. So I took my things back, and while hauling the final few things I needed back to the ship, I noticed that the kidnapper fox is actually on top of the building here? This only happened to me a few times, and I haven't been able to recreate it since, but it's real convenient since he can't come down from there. I did tragically have to leave two keys behind, but all things considered, I did pretty good. 6.48 in total. Day 87, once again, the fox was on top of the building. Inside, I grabbed two things and then got the fucking ghost girl again and had to leave. What a stupid bullshit piece of fuck. I sold my stuff and actually had quite the excess of money and bought some silly things. Day 88, we're going back to Titan and the fox is on the roof. This has not happened to me a single time since I finished recording this video. I got mansion, which is a little atypical, and wasn't quite as lucky right out of the gate as I was on day 86, finding a hairdryer, a bolt, and a key. I also found a kitchen, which was guarded by a crawler, and my inventory was mostly full, so I just got my stuff, then got one more load out of the area before running outside. I checked the fire exit, which was totally dry, and also spotted a jester. After taking one load of stuff down to the ship, Old Bird showed up, and I ran back in to get some more stuff down from the nearby kitchen, and took only the most valuable things with me for this last trip, and got down as fast as I could. Old Bird was attacking me right as I shut the door, which was absolutely terrifying, by the way. Day 89, I went back to Titan, and after finding just one item, I got accosted by a spider right as I found a room with a bunch of loot. I checked the bone dry fire exit, grabbed some light items from around, before returning to the loot room, which was once again being stalked by the fucking spider. Worst of all, right as I was running away from it, Ghost Girl appeared. I love this mechanic. Day 90, my unwarranted greed caused me to be attracted to Eclipse Titan, and I will now play you the entirety of this day. Yeah. 
What a perfect storm. A, a beautiful crescendo of chaos. Just immaculate. Day 90 was the last day of quota, so we're actually on a new run now. I'm going assurance. I found a couple of items, and here I found a V-type engine in the stairs. Damn, I didn't know these stairs were powered by fossil fuels. Outside of this room, I made an ill-advised turn and didn't realize there was a turret across from me until it was too late. Day 92, I love the company. Pretty standard day, I'm skipping over it a little because I want to get to day 100. Not to say I'm doing anything special for day 100, it's just I'll be done with the video then. Also, it's 4am on the 21st as of writing, and I'm trying to finish this video by the end of the month, so I really want to be done in the next couple of hours. Uh, by the way, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, 2.58am on, uh, August 22nd, uh, as I'm doing the voiceover, and this is not written, um, and I'm, uh, gonna lose my goddamn mind. Day 93 I was on Vow, and I only had bottles to my name, and this fucking hoarding bug just attacked me for no reason. Do they genuinely do this because they try to take the items that are in your hands, and because they suddenly consider it theirs, they try to kill you for taking it, even though fucking finders keepers, you piece of shit? I found one of these loot rooms, but it had nothing in the way of loot. Just past it, however, was the apparatus, so I'm at least a little comfortable now for money. I began taking stuff back soon after, and again, this is the same shit I've done a million times now. Well, like 60 times or whatever, but it doesn't matter. I did pop an easter egg though, so that was scary. I realized as I was leaving with the last thing of bottles that I could check the fire exit, and in it I found another key, a whoopee cushion, and a chemical jug. I returned for those items, and as I was about to get to the ship, I saw a giant. I might have already said this, but I kind of feel like giants should be slower. It just doesn't make sense for the largest and one of the most intimidating creatures in the game to also move faster than the player while sprinting. Day 94, it's a new run and I'm starting on assurance. Other than keys, I didn't pick up a single item until two and a half minutes into my recording, which is pretty bad. At this point, I'm very familiar with every single room that can spawn in the facilities, so nothing really surprises me. I ran back to the main entrance and I dodged some slime, but got attacked by a snare flea. Assuming the snare flea didn't outright kill me, I was also worried about the slime making its way over and taking me down, but fortunately I walked away from the encounter with my head half eaten and every bone in my body shattered, but still alive. Anyway, I brought my stuff to the ship. That's it. Day 95, I ran back to Assurance, where I immediately found three easter eggs, some bottles, and the apparatus. I kinda wandered around the facility, but there were a few out of view steam leaks, so I didn't want to stray too far from charted land. Honestly, this facility wasn't exceptionally good, but I got a decent amount of loot from it because there was a, a weird amount of it that was very close to the main entrance. I took out the apparatus last and still had a bunch of shit to take back. This actually ended up taking up like more than half of my day because I had a shit ton of two-handers. Day 96 I'm going March and it was immediately absolutely terrible for money. After several minutes I had like three items. I then heard a crawler and started running from it with pretty much no idea where I was going, but somehow happened to make it to the main entrance, so I left with those three items. Honestly, 153 is really good for how that day turned out. I reported to the company building to sell my scrap metal and other goods as I had zero days left to meet the profit quota, and I bagged an easy 700. Day 97, I'm going to Titan, and you may already be noticing the problem with the number of 100 days. I ran down this doorway and was immediately greeted with a gun in my face, so that's nice. Nearly the same thing happened here, but I caught it right at the right angle and managed to survive it. I found this loot room which normally gets absolutely stacked cabinets on Titan, but for me it had next to nothing. Near it though, I found a room with multiple high ticket items waiting for me, so I dropped off and looted up. I searched the right and grabbed a few things there before heading outside to bring the things to the ship. As I grabbed the last few items, I saw a mask coming for me. I maybe would have collected the last two items which I missed and checked the fire exit, but instead I just chose to head home. Day 98, it's back to Titan. The audio was slightly out of sync, but you don't know that because I resynced it. I basically found a full inventory of goods immediately on the left. After finding basically nothing for a while, I found this turret, and I'm not sure how I only took one tick of damage here, but I'm not complaining. I then found a jester, and when he began winding up, the pressure was on to get out, which I did manage to, but it was very much for more closer than I... Uh, what the f that, uh, uh, the my script varied, so I was I was trying to go off the cuff and it didn't work out.
Anyway, I brought down a load of stuff to wait for the jester to calm the fuck down, and checked the fire exit, which had an engine and a spider. I also took a peek in the main entrance again before deciding fuck that and just bringing the last few things down. Titan was stormy on day 99, which means if I'm holding metal stuff, I just gotta watch out. Pretty sure I already explained this, but you have the attention span of a goldfish because you've watched so many YouTube videos. Also, the audio is still out of sync, but I'm not gonna fix it this time because fuck you. While exploring, I heard some schlapping, which means there's a coil head around, which quickly made himself known. And this was basically game over. This was a pretty short day, but the storm made taking stuff to the ship a very long process, but I did get it done. I went to the shop and sold just enough to make it to Titan, as I had quite the excess of stuff that I could save for a rainy day. I probably could have sold some more and gone to Artifish to do something special for day 100, but instead I just opted for good old Titan. I dropped off a wedding ring at the door, grabbed a gift box and a large axle, before checking the fire exit, which the area around it was absolutely stacked with loot. I began taking stuff down to the ship to leave, but as I was about to drop off the first load of things, I was attacked by a kidnapper fox, which killed me. I swear to god I pressed the button to close the door like six times, this game hates me. So. I kinda realized now that it would be weird to end the video where I can still continue the run, so I'm just gonna keep playing until I have failed to meet the quota. I pretty much immediately got a full inventory of stuff on day 101, and while there was still plenty for me to take, a crawler was there which probably would have killed me, and immediately upon entering the fire exit there was a spider staring me in the face. I began taking stuff down, but on my first inventory, right after I dropped it off, I realized there was a furry friend waiting for me, and I just wanted you to watch this whole clip for me. Yeah, so what the fuck was that? If it has you tongued for long enough without you dying, does it just kill you anyway? Or did it move? Uh, and also, why the fuck can it go on your ship? That's ridiculous. I'm so bad. <laughs> So as I died, I hit Alt F4 to reset me back to where I was before I started Day 101, because that was utter bullshit. I still basically have no choice in the matter, I'm going Titan, Stormy or otherwise. I actually didn't start my recording until I was like halfway up the stairs, but today there was a mansion, and I pretty much immediately heard a nutcracker. That worried me, but at this point I could generally avoid them as long as they don't corner me. The bottom floor of the mansion had three doors, but none of them had particularly good loot. Also, I heard the fox while dropping off this inventory. The top floor had just one door, and it was almost empty, so I checked the one door I didn't fully explore and found a pill bottle, but nothing else. That means I probably missed another corridor somewhere. The fire exit was not near anything I knew, and I didn't have much to loot either, so I called it there. Moving the loot was boring, but my last inventory was just four keys, which is really funny. By the way, I don't do this at any point today, but there is a strategy where people place a bunch of keys around the ship when it's stormy and have them act as lightning rods. Uh, it's pretty effective, I've done it before, but I just don't do it here. Day 103, I started my recording even later. I was already in the facility this time. I only realized after I brought my stuff out for the first time that I was on Vow. I searched around a little after bringing out that first load and found the apparatus and the homemade flashbang. Outside, while bringing the first load of items back, I heard the fox. Love that for me. While returning to the main entrance, I got distracted by a shiny thing in the distance and wasted a bit of time exploring the fire exit. I found nothing. And I returned to the ship with the last two items, and this time no foxes invading my domicile. Also, I sold my stuff. I think you know how that went. Day 104, I'm going back to Titan. I kind of hope I lose this run horribly because this video was supposed to be over half a week ago. After a couple minutes, all I found was a 7 ball and a painting. This is going great. I found this room with the chasms and immediately got a V-type engine before being interrupted in my looting by a crawler. Honestly, in this video, dying to something normal but not incredibly boring is a blessing. Uh, so I'll take what I can get. Day 105, I entered the facility at a minute and one second, and died to dual turrets at a minute and 52 seconds. Well, I'm definitely going Titan on day 106. I need 550 in one day. Immediate giant as I was leaving the ship. I didn't check, but I'm pretty sure we're eclipsed. Large axle right out the gate. That's actually kind of terrible. Those things aren't worth shit. Good loot room here, though. A lamp, an engine, an axle, and two small things. A bracket nearly jumped me here, but he didn't quite get me. 
I dropped off some bottles and an air horn after that, which totaled 424. After that, I heard a weird noise. I sure hope that's nothing worrisome. More scary sounds. I've but a clue what those may be. I ran out because I'm actually pretty sure that was the ghost girl, but after taking the first inventory down, I learned there was not only a giant, but also an eyeless dog down by the ship. I assumed I was safe here, but accidentally ended up aggroing both of them. Because there are two, apparently. I just barely made it to the ladder, nearly died getting down the few things I could manage, and while I did want to go for the last inventory, I realized I don't think I'd have a shot, and I might already have enough to sell. So after poking my head out a few times, I decided I would just return with what I have. Back at the company, I sold, with great anticipation, 491 credits worth of goods, meaning I have not made quota. I purchased another cruiser today with my excess cash, because it's not like I'll get to spend it on anything. I did nearly blow this one up too, but I managed to figure out the gear shift thing and was able to at least try driving it around a little before I blew it up. I thought here that the smoke billing out of the exhaust pipe was a problem, but I think that's just how the truck is. No wonder we need to go to other planets, we must have fucking polluted ours to the point of extinction. I played around with it a little, but after I put it into park, I should have known that I was within one mile of the gas pedal, which instantly killed me. As you have not met the profit quota, your performance has been deemed the most tended. Welcome to our disciplinary process. Alright, well that's the end of the video. Bye.